Hey guys, let's take a look at the care plan for disseminated intravascular coagulation, also known as DIC. So in this lesson, we'll briefly take a look at the pathophysiology and etiology of DIC. We're also going to look at subjective and objective data, as well as nursing interventions and rationales. Okay, let's look closer at DIC. So this is a condition where small blood clots form throughout the body's small blood vessels. Serious bleeding can occur internally and externally because these clots use up platelets and clotting factors in the blood. Acute DIC develops within a few hours or days and leads to serious bleeding. Chronic DIC develops over weeks or months and doesn't usually lead to excessive bleeding, but the formation of more clots. So there are several diseases and disorders that cause DIC, generally derived from one of two processes, either a an inflammatory process, sepsis or major trauma, or exposure of a procoagulant material in the blood, like cancer, a brain injury, obstetric event. DIC can also occur due to a venomous snake bite. Presentation and treatment depends on the cause and whether the DIC is acute or chronic. So the desired outcome is going to be to treat the underlying cause, promote optimal gas exchange, restore clotting factors, and reduce the risk of bleeding. Let's take a look at some of the subjective and objective data that your patient with DIC may present with. Now remember, subjective data, these are going to be things that are based on your patient's opinions or feelings. And for DIC, they may express chest pain, shortness of breath, pain in the affected limb, a headache, dizziness, or even double vision. Objective data may include erythema, warmth of the affected area, swelling, blood in the urine or the stool, petechiae, or of course, uncontrolled bleeding. Okay, now on to the nursing interventions necessary when caring for a patient with DIC. Assess and monitor the respiratory status, noting the rates, the rhythm, and if there is any cyanosis. In both acute and chronic DIC, blood cl clots often form or travel to the lungs, resulting in an embolism. This will be evident by shortness of breath, cyanosis, complaints of chest pain. Be sure to auscultate the lungs for areas of absent air movement. You're also going to want to assess and monitor the cardiac status, including a 12-lead EKG, of course, as indicated, tachycardia and changes in blood pressure and decreased capillary refills are signs of deteriorating cardiovascular function. Next, assess for changes in level of consciousness because early signs of hypoxia include confusion and irritability. And guys, monitor for signs of stroke as these clots can also travel to the brain. You're also going to want to monitor arterial blood gases and closely monitor oxygen saturation, administering oxygen when necessary, keeping sats greater than 90% for optimal tissue perfusion. So with DIC, even the simplest of procedures like a venipuncture or an IV can cause external bleeding, which is severe. You must apply more pressure than normal to help with clotting in these situations. Assess the amount and color of your patient's urine as there could be decreased perfusion to the kidneys, which may result in hematuria and decrease urine output of less than 30 mLs per hour. Monitor for blood in the stool. Now, dark blood in the stool can indicate a 
GI bleed, while bright red blood may indicate hemorrhoids or anal fissures. It's important for these patients to administer stool softeners to avoid straining during bowel movements. A common indicator of DIC is blood with suctioning. So make sure you are observing for blood when suctioning or with emesis. Monitoring labs like platelet count, PT and PTT, and the D dimer level are critical to help determine if treatment is effective. So for DIC patients, it's so important to minimize the risks of bleeding from friction, injury, or pressure. So this means no razors, using a soft bristle, bristle toothbrush, limit needle sticks and BP readings as much as possible, and observe for petechiae and purpura. Heparin may be used for chronic DIC, when clotting is more of a problem. Excessive blood loss may require a transfusion in antibiotics when sepsis or infection is the underlying factor. Okay, guys, here is a look at the completed care plan for DIC. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you want to just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.